What's going on my friends? My name is Chris and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to convert currency on the Interactive Brokers mobile application as well as how to do it on the desktop application TWS. So if you guys are enjoying this content let me know with a comment down below. I'm going to show you some quick efficient ways to exchange currency and you can do this for a number of reasons. One of them might be to cover a negative cash balance. The other one might be to pay yourself in your local currency after a couple of nice trades. I'm gonna record the screen on my phone. So I'm in my Interactive Brokers mobile application here under the watch list tab at the bottom there. And I'm gonna first show you the simple way of converting currency in your trading account. And they actually have a built-in feature for how to do this. So this is the easy way. So I'll go over to the portfolio tab at the bottom left. And then at the top right of your screen, we have the three dots. I want you to select that. And then you can select convert currency from there. Now, here's where you have to put in the currency that you have in your account that you want to convert to. And it's going to use a market order type, meaning that as soon as the order is submitted, it's going to be fulfilled because you're going to be taking whatever liquidity is available in the liquidity pool that Interactive Brokers has. It's called IBFX or Ideal Pro, which is their sort of currency liquidity pool that they have going on there. Um, so that's how you do it. I'm not going to put in the currencies there because it's going to show account balances and I have to block out. So I'll go back out of this menu for now and I'll go over to the watch list tab on the bottom there. Now, this is the second method that you can convert currency, um, which is by just submitting an order for the currency in your account. So let's say, for example, I want to short some US dollars or sell some US dollars. Let's say I'm long US dollars and I want to convert it to Canadian dollars in this case. So I will select the currency pair right there, which is the second one from the top, USD.CAD. I'm going to select it right there and it's going to show you what the current bid and offer is. I'll select it again to go into the quote panel for this particular symbol. And now here you can select quote, uh, view the order book if you want by selecting the book. It's going to show you like the top five levels. And if you want to submit an order, you do it at the bottom of the page where it says sell and buy. So if I want to sell US dollars to get Canadian dollars, I will select sell. And now I have an order entry panel right here. So by default, it's going to populate a quantity of 25,000. Now, the reason why it does that is because that is the minimum quoting quantity that IB has set for their ideal pro exchange. If you exchange an amount less than that, which you can do, um, the only limitation is that your order is going to be considered an odd lot order, meaning you cannot be filled on the spread. I'll tell you what that means in a second here. So let's say I want to sell a thousand dollars of US dollars, okay? Because I have whatever amount in my account, I just want to sell a thousand dollars. The next thing is, let's say I want to put the price in as a limit order above the current price. That's what I'm going to do in this case, order type limit. And then I have to just select the limit price. So in this case, as an example, I'll just put 1.347, which is about, you know, maybe about 250 pips above the current market price. So we're not going to be filled on that unless the market moves 250 pips by the time I'm done this video, which I doubt it will, but it might. So the time and force, um, if you plan on leaving the order in for a long time, you might as well change that to good till canceled or else it's going to be canceled at the end of the trading session, which maybe you don't want to do. And if you want, you can attach a stop loss and target to your order. But in this case, we're just showing a simple currency conversion. So you don't have to attach orders to that. Um, then at the very bottom of the page, you can select preview to preview your order and the margin impact that it might have on your account and the potential estimated commission and all that. Um, once you're done with that, you can close the preview menu and then select submit sell order in this case at the very bottom. And then you get the option to transmit it or don't transmit it. So I'm going to transmit it in this case. And then here's another final confirmation and you can choose to not show the confirmation again if you wish. I'll select OK and then it'll tell us that the order has been submitted. So when you see order submitted, that's when you know your order has been officially submitted and the broker has your order. It's in the system. It's on the exchange. OK, and then you can you know select done at that point or cancel it or do as you wish. Now to view your orders, you can go back from here and go at the very bottom where it says transactions. Now under transactions and then the orders tab, you'll be able to see your existing orders. In this case, you can see I have that live order right there, USD CAD at 1.347 and it's a good till canceled order. If you wanted to cancel that particular order, you can select the order and then it will give you information about the order, including the order status and all that. You can choose to modify it or you can cancel it. So in this case, I'm just going to simply cancel the order. And that's how you submit a currency exchange order manually in your account. Let's go ahead and do it on the desktop platform now. 
So in this case, what I want to do is I want to sell US dollars in my account and buy Canadian dollars. So I'm going to right click on this symbol and select sell. Now, uh, make sure you've selected the current account or the correct account. Then I'll select the amount that I want to convert. In this case, I'm going to do $2,000. And then you go ahead and select the current rate. You could do a market order if you want. It's not really going to make a difference in terms of the uh, commission or anything because um, it's always pretty much transparent. And then once you're ready with that, you can go ahead and submit uh, the order at the price you want. If you want to be picky about it, you can you know, look at where the market's trading now. Though if you don't want to be picky about it, just go ahead and submit it at the current price. So I'll go ahead and join this offer here at uh, 57.55. I'll transmit it, and it's going to tell me that my order size is below the minimum, which is 25,000. So what they're telling you is that your order is an odd lot order, and that you can't really get us um, filled on the spread with that. So I don't really mind that. So I'll just select transmit in this case. So my order's in. And it's on the Ideal Pro Exchange, uh, which is the only pretty much exchange that there is. And uh, you can see here on the right uh, that it's green, meaning that the order is active right now. Okay, and you can see that we're not really getting filled here. So if you want, I could move the order a little bit lower if I want to get a fill now. Uh, my order is on the ask at 55, but because it's an odd lot order, the broker won't give us the spread. That's just how it works. That's a rule that they made. So I lowered it by a tick and uh, we'll see if we can get something better and you can see the market is going down a little bit it's being chased to the downside um, so we'll see if we can get that fill at 75.50 or 75 even in this case so the offer is currently at that price so it basically needs to trade at 55 for us to be filled at 50 because like i said we can't get filled on the spread now, for orders larger than 25,000, I'm sure you could get filled on the spread. If it goes bid at 55, we should be filled. There it is right there, okay? So it just went bid very quickly and we're filled. Now I have it. Conf I have my IB account configured that every time there's a trade, it, um, it sends an alert and it also notifies me via mobile. So don't mind that alert. So that's how you convert currency. So here's the trade that took place. There's the time we sold 2,000 US dollars. There's the account, there's the commission, $2.72, which would equate to about uh, 0.01 to 0.02% of the trade value in this case. So let's go ahead, I'm on my mobile app and I've selected the tab at the bottom right of the page where it says more at the bottom right. Okay, you select that and then you select alerts. This is the menu to get into the alerts panel on the mobile app. So let's select alerts right there. Now here I can see all of the active alerts that I have for this particular trading account. You can select between your trading accounts there at the top. So I'm gonna select the plus icon at the top to configure a new alert. So let's configure it. You can give it a name. You can set a particular condition and that's what we need to do. So I will touch here to set the condition for the alert and I can select trade in this case. And then by default, all the items here are set to any. So what this really means here is you're telling the broker you want to be alerted anytime there's a trade on any underlying, on any exchange, and any order type or any type of trade that occurs. Then at the bottom we have apply this alert to IBKR mobile orders only or apply it to all of your orders. I would personally select all orders in this case because I want to be notified anytime there's an order in the account that trades. Um, so here there's a few additional settings that you can configure before you confirm the alert. Um, you can tell them if you want to be notified by text message. You can set it so that it doesn't notify you outside of real time hours. And then you can choose an expiry date for this particular alert and you can choose if you want the alert to be repeatable. So the alert that I use to alert me every time a trade occurs is I set repeatable to yes. I have the text message item also enabled and I also have it set that it never expires. So the expires option is going to be off. So when you're done with that, you can simply select done at the top. I'm not gonna select it now because I've already configured this particular alert, okay? Here's one final example showing how to place an alert on a stock symbol. So again, I'm in the alerts panel, which is accessed by selecting the more tab at the bottom right and then selecting the alerts button. Then I'm gonna select the plus icon and now I can give the alert a name, but really what's important to the alert is the condition. So I'll go ahead and select condition or add the condition to it. And now 
I'll choose price because I wanna be notified when a particular stock or a particular market achieves a certain price. So we'll select the price condition. Now I'll select the symbol. This is where you have to put in the symbol. Uh, so let's say in this case, it's the top one, which is BABA that trades on the New York Stock Exchange. So I clicked on it and then it wants to know if we're talking about the stock BABA, the options for BABA, the warrants or the CFDs. So in this case, let's just do stock just to keep it simple. And then it gives us the option to put in a trigger method. What the trigger method is, is under what circumstances do you want this alert to, to be triggered basically? Now, normally we leave it to default or last, which is pretty much the same thing. So when the last price exceeds this price, generally you want the alert to be triggered. That's kind of what it means when you set it to default or last. So if you wanna be specific, set it to last. So when the last price is greater than or equal to 82.90, that's what this alert says right here. So let's say it's an alert on the sell side. Let's say uh, when it goes below 80 bucks, you wanna be notified. You put the price of $80 and you have to change the operator to less than or equal to because you want to be notified when the price of BABA is less than or equal to $80, all right? Once you're done with that, you select done, and then you can choose the additional options here regarding being notified by text message, repeating the alert, or expiring the alert, or outside real-time hours. Choose those if you want, and once you're done, you select done at the top right, and there you have it. You now configured alerts on the IB Mobile platform. Thank you for watching, my friends. Click here to watch another video regarding IB order placement, and then click here to watch a whole playlist of IB tutorials. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.